Hi, I'm Nick Sider, field crop entomologist at the University of Illinois. Today we're going to be talking about economic decision making in pest management. What I'm really talking about with that is how to determine whether or not I need to spray an insecticide in this field and how to make that determination based on input costs and based on the likelihood of suffering damage from a given pest population. So there's a couple of levels we'll talk about when we're making this determination. The first of these is what's called the economic injury level. And that's the insect population level that's going to cause economic losses that are equal to the cost of control. You can think of this as the break-even point. This is where the damage from that insect in terms of dollars, whether that's a loss in yield or in quality, is equal to the cost of control. Now, how do we determine this? We make a comparison between the cost of control and the product of crop value, economic losses based on insect density, again that could be reductions in yield or reductions in quality, and the effectiveness of that control. Now as you might imagine, these levels don't stay static, they do change over time. They change based on changes in those factors. And so, for instance, as crop value decreases, the economic entry level will increase, meaning that you actually need a higher pest population to justify protecting that less expensive crop, that less valuable crop. As the cost of control decreases, the economic entry level decreases. It takes fewer pests to justify putting out that cheaper insecticide. And as the control effectiveness decreases, for instance, if you have resistance to a given insecticide, the economic injury level then will increase. It's going to take more pests to justify using that less effective control option. Now that's the break-even point, the economic injury level. What we want to do out in the field is to protect ourselves from reaching that point. That's where the economic threshold comes in. So that's going to be the insect population level that should actually trigger a control. That's your take action point. That's the point where it's time to do something to mitigate this pest outbreak, be that an insecticide or a transgenic crop variety, resistant crop variety, a cultural practice, whatever it might be. That level is based on the economic injury level, and it's always going to be set lower than the economic entry level. So what we're trying to do, again, is to prevent ourselves from reaching that level where damage is equal to the cost of control. And when you look in, ext in extension recommendations or in recommendations on pest management from another source, the economic threshold is the level that we're going to report, that we're going to re recommend you take action on. Uh, but this level, again, is based on that break-even point, that economic injury level. And so because of this, these economic thresholds have a lead time built in that's going to prevent us from uh, having economic loss. It's going to prevent pests from causing that economic loss based on the injury level. So just some examples of economic thresholds that we use in Illinois. If you're looking at the corn root worm, for instance, you would monitor that pest using a yellow sticky card like you see in the lower left there. And in continuous corn, we have an economic threshold of two beetles per trap per day. And in rotated corn, we have an economic threshold of one and a half beetles per trap per day. So if you're monitoring a soybean field and you exceed one and a half beetles per trap per day, you know that you're very likely to get an economic return from protecting corn grown the next year from corn rootworm, either with a soil insecticide or with a BT hybrid. When we look at defoliators in soybean, similar to the picture we showed you on the front page, we're actually going to estimate the percent defoliation that we have on that field. And we have an economic threshold of 20% defoliation when 20% of that soybean foliage has been removed by these insect pests. Um, then a control action is very likely to give us a positive um, economic return. So back to the question I asked at the beginning, do I need to spray an insecticide in this field? 
we have an economic threshold of 20% defoliation after bloom. In this case, we have a field that has 16% defoliation. We're below that economic threshold, so spraying in this field would not pay for itself. And that's ultimately what we're trying to do is guide that spray decision by when it's going to provide a positive return on that input cost.